Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Season 3 of the Audiobook Club with John York, a podcast celebrating every aspect of audiobook production and the surrounding industry. The Audiobook Club is sponsored by Amplify Audiobooks by Pro Audio Voices. To hear more about the phenomenal movements Amplify Audiobooks is making for independent authors in the audiobook space, you can find a direct link in the bio of this episode, as well as a short but informative advertisement within this interview. Let's start the show. Hello and welcome to the Audiobook Club. In this week's episode, we're so lucky to be joined once again by CEO of Amplify Audiobooks and Pro Audio Voices, author and audiobook producer, director and narrator, Becky Parker Geist. Becky, it's so lovely to have you back on the show. How are you today? I'm doing great. I'm always glad to be here with you. It's awesome. Yeah, oh, I'm so pleased. Thank you so much for coming on again. I really do appreciate it. Um, so I want to start off with some news. Pro Audio Voices has just celebrated its 10th anniversary as a business, which is just incredible. Like, How, how are you feeling about that? Uh, pretty over the top of the world. I mean, I feel really great about it. It's uh, It's hard to believe in some ways that it's been that long. And yet in other ways, it feels like it's been even longer. Um, but it's been a wonderful journey. Um, yeah, so really excited to be able to share that celebration with so many wonderful people. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's cool. Fantastic. Well, one of the things that you're celebrating with the 10th year is, of course, Amplify Audiobooks. Um, now, a big question right off the bat. Can you tell our listeners who may not be familiar with Amplify Audiobooks just yet, what is Amplify Audiobooks? How did this idea begin? Yeah, well, it all began uh, several years ago. Um, I think it was, I don't know, It's it's got to be at least five years ago, but maybe around that time that I was, you know, I was working with a growing number of clients. I realized that the, their royalties were so low compared to what they the audiobooks were selling for, and that was across the board. And and then the other thing, and this kept growing, this need and desire, I'd be talking with clients, they were like, oh, I want to run a promotion. I'm like, ah, there's not really any any way to do that because there's just no, no control over this myriad uh, group of audiobook retailers. And so that that desire, I kept thinking about it and dreaming about it and trying to figure out how I could do it to create a system or even partner up with some other company already doing it. You know, I was happy to do that, but there was no one else doing it. <laughs> and that was to be able to provide a, pl- a way for authors to sell their audiobooks directly that also had a good customer user experience because uh, that's where they kind of fall down. If you just like are selling on your website a, a bunch of audio files and no one really wants to do that, you know, yeah. it doesn't work out. Yeah. So yeah. that it, that kept growing and growing. A few years ago, we had what seemed like a, a, ne- a, a beginning step for that and had a, a delivery solution that was uh, turned out to be not as good as we had hoped uh, in terms of that customer experience. So mm-hmm. we were like, as soon as we recognized that, we're like, okay, we need to, you know, really ramp it up and mm-hmm. have our own app developed so that we can do this properly. And oh my gosh, so exciting to be able to launch Amplify Audiobooks officially with the app and the yeah. the author dashboard and everything so they can have direct control that happened um july of this year so it's really we're just a couple months into into the process right now yeah Mm. so i'm really looking forward to getting um into the details with you um about the process um and about the resolutions but first um would we be able to chat a little bit about the challenges that independent authors face at the moment, you know, in terms of not seeing the rewards that they deserve from communicating and working with so many independent authors through the years? What are what are some of the big challenges that you, you see authors face that perhaps they're not even aware there's a there's a way around them? Right. Yeah. Well, I, and just to sort of preface this, you know, I've been mm-hmm now president of Bay Area Independent Publishers Association, which is a very active group. We have about 200 members and I've been president for about 10 years now. And mm-hmm. and so I really have kind of that inside look into 
what these struggles are for indie authors in particular. But I and I and I know we have small publishers in that group as well. So this is is also very true for them. The challenges that they face, first of all, it's it's complicated to be able to publish an audiobook and trying to learn like what are the best practices and how do I, you know, just moving through those steps. But then once you get to where you're published, then it becomes like, okay, how can I market the book and audiobook so that I can really achieve my goals? And that go those goals may be financial, but more often they're like, reach. I want to be able to reach my audience. So there are a lot of typical best practice kinds of things that uh, activities that people engage in, in in a marketing way. And they often rely on being able to control your own pricing and mm -hmm. to have the information, to be able to gather the information about who your followers are, because it's mm -hmm. so much about relationships. You know, we, we want that that community we're we're building these different you know groups of different communities because we're humans you know and this is yeah. this is what we 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 seek out and what helps us to thrive as people hmm. so the retail model it's almost a stumbling block right yes it it was a way to get started for you know for the industry it's very classic capitalist model right mm. but we want so much to be able to to help our to build that community you know and mm. to be able to thrive you know many of the authors that i talk with they would like to be able to leave their regular job and just be able to focus on their writing and create more great content I would love to help people do that. So this is mm. all a, a part of that. In the audiobook world specifically, and especially because in other areas, you know, with print and ebook, there are ways and means to run a promotion, for example. Not to have your own customer information, that's still barred from you, but uh, you have to build your email list on your own website, and then you're trying to sell your things over here, and it's not, you know, it's not always... Yeah easy to cross over but but with audiobooks it just wasn't available mm. so our world our audiobook world we needed this so yeah. badly because it's the only way our authors are gonna are gonna be able to make any more audiobooks right i mean unless you just have a huge bankroll behind you and you know some do and that's awesome but not everybody does mm. so they need ways to succeed and this is Amplify yeah. audiobooks is it's a dream come true for me. It's a game changer for the authors that that get on board with it. And it's and it's also a way that listeners can increase their impact. We vote with our dollars. Yeah, and for and for consumers or, you know, customers or, you know, audiobook fans to be able to give back to their authors, there has to be a platform that allows them to do that properly. Um, right. And uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. So you mentioned a few challenges there with with setting the price. Now, a few uh, authors who haven't perhaps haven't ventured into um, getting an audiobook yet may not even be aware that you you don't control your price on some of the right. on the major distribution on the you know the most popular distribution um, you know methods the platforms out there. Now, it may sound to seem like a little basic question, but like, how does not being able to set the price of your audiobook affect your royalties it's really it's like across the board even though there are platforms where we can suggest a price and mm -hmm. many retailers will accept that and use that mm -hmm. we don't have control over it. we can't say oh hey would you just you know change the price would you make it this instead of that you don't have that kind mm -hmm. of control but why does it matter well for one thing just on the most basic level it's very disempowering if you can't mm -hmm. control your own product, right? Mm. You put a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of money into creating something, and then you have no control over it, which is very frustrating. It impacts the royalties that you're going to get very directly. So on Amplify Audiobooks, you can say, I'm going to sell my book. I want to sell my audiobook for $10. And you know that you're going to get $6.50 for every one that you sell 
on other platforms where, first of all, you, you don't control the pricing, you also don't have any control over your royalty rates. Someone, for example, Audible, might sell your audiobook for $14.95. That would be sort of a typical price because that's one credit. Uh, they might give it away as a teaser. They'll still get their money, but you won't get any. That's something that a lot of people also don't realize about mm. about the the pricing and, and how all of that works. Because your, your book can be given away as a teaser, and then that's what they sold it for. So mm. you get zero of zero or, you know, whatever of zero. Being able to control your pricing allows you to operate with your marketing more effectively. Mm. Just for example, there might be a... Maybe it's it's a holiday and you want to line up your price with the date of the holiday or you want, you know, there's, there's so many things that we can do when we have creative control. So do you think that authors who, who you know, are not on Amplify Audiobooks, who, who don't have that control, don't have um, access to their customers, don't have all of that vital information and control of their pricing, running promotions, etc. Do you think that that can sometimes discourage them from their marketing efforts because if Absolutely. they have no control over that like could you could you perhaps chat a little about like what this also does to just like the enthusiasm to want to 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 yeah. market your books yeah it's like if there's nothing you can do about it it feels like you shouldn't do anything you know <laughs> do <laughs> you know yeah it's so it, it's that comes back to that like disempowering it's frustrating and it does tend to lead to people to just give up. Whereas where if you if you go into your launch or you know into your your marketing strategy the next level wherever you are with it mm -hmm. and you know you have this level of control it's like ah oh, the sky opens up you know oh i could i could run this promotion i could i could connect you know i can connect in i can connect a current event with a with a sale or a discount code. Oh, I could go to this this special group that is like my target audience perfectly. Mm -hmm. I could reach out to them. I can make a deal with them that I'll give them a a special discount code, you know, mm -hmm. or maybe oh, there's this event that's going to happen. This my target audience is going to be at that event. I'll make a deal with the event producers that their audience gets my audiobook for free. And they license, you know, they pay me X amount of dollars so that they can do that many downloads. There's so many creative marketing possibilities. But if you have no control, you just, you know, you're just like, you're doing social media, you're just throwing it out there and you're saying, it's available. And, you know, hopefully you're also doing things like engaging with people. You know, I'm not saying yeah. that that's the only thing on social media, but the thing is, if your marketing is limited to pointing to other channels where you have no control, mm. then it's a little bit like spitting into the wind, you know? Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah like absolutely. Frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. So for those authors who may say, okay, well, what if I, if I take full control of my audiobook and I sell it from my website? For those who are in that position, why is it not a great idea to sell MP3s from just from your website as a download? Why why yeah. does that impact um, the listener experience? People need an easy way to listen to something, and the mm. truth is that y yes, you can sell a folder of files, but an audiobook is really a playlist and a cover image that are all packaged together with its metadata. It's not like a print book, which is a single object or an ebook, mm. which is a single digital object. It's a whole bunch of objects. Mm. So all kinds of things can happen. And maybe the most typical would be someone downloads the files and then goes, okay, well now how do I listen to them? Because they mm. have to figure out which program and is that program gonna play them in order? And will it bookmark where you left off? Probably mm. not. There's just so many challenges mm. and listeners don't, they don't do with they don't do challenges <laughs> no but the whole 
I always think that the whole point of an audiobook is the fact that you can take it, you can go for a walk and listen to it. Oh, and you yeah. can go for a drive. I mean, you're not going to go for a walk with your laptop out playing it on the web, you know, on the, right. on the media player on there. It just doesn't, it, it right. just doesn't, uh, <laughs> it yeah, limits it's not- uh, it's, yeah, it's not a good experience. So th- that that's the main thing. And you know, I will say there are there are a couple um, uh, there are a couple other programs where you can with an app delivery where you can um, sell your audiobook directly, um, but they both have like high monthly fees. Like you got to pay you know thirty dollars a month just to have those programs. Even uh, even book funnels going up from that. They're just in beta right now. But here's the other thing about that is while you can do that, you're still in that situation where now you're trying to get, well, you're not going to, if, if another author who has a similar target audience to yours is, you know, when they're drawing people to the Amplify audiobooks platform, your mm-hmm. chances of getting discovered go Mm -hmm. dramatically up right Mm -hmm. you're kind of on your own pretty much on your own if you're going to try and do that other version in addition to being really expensive you also have the you know just that uh that that solo experience whereas Mm -hmm. on amplify audiobooks a big part of it is that it is a community we encourage community we cross collaborate or we collaborate, we cross promote, we're doing a lot of things to really, um, you know, increase your visibility, you know, in this larger context. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so I think there's, there's value, there's great value in being in a platform where they're, you know, in being in the bookstore, if you will, instead of yeah. there's one book on a shelf, or, you know, maybe you have a series, maybe there's a few books on the shelf, but it's only yeah. yours. You have to get people to walk into your own private bookstore where there's only your titles versus, oh, I'm going to go into a bookstore. Let's see what's here. And there's a whole yeah. bunch, a whole range. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's yeah. a bigger challenge, I think, for authors. Yeah. And de- definitely, and I think it's it's as you were saying that with about about that bookstore as well. I don't know about you, but when I go into an actual bookstore and look for books, I may just go in for one, or I may you know purchase one, read it. But when I come back, there's always something else that's caught my eye. So it's yeah. that extra that sort of opportunity for somebody else who maybe was looking for another thing that then finds your title on there next to it and goes, oh okay, what's this? And you know, goes in um yeah. and, and and chooses that. So yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, I think there's that. So when, um, say, an author has their audiobook on Amplify Audiobooks, they're running a promotion. They're posting on social media, telling their listeners, there's this promotion, this new audiobook is out. What does a listener do to obtain that book? How does, from a listener's point of view, how, how do they get their hands on that audiobook? Yeah, well, the author hopefully will have included a link but even if they didn't so i'll give you both options yeah. if they didn't include a link straight to that that audiobook on the website then then you uh you can go to the your app store just download the amplify audiobooks app there's a discover more books button that will that will help you find it all of the sales happen on the website and there are good mm-hmm. reasons for that it's so that the authors can earn as much as they possibly can from each individual sale, um, Mm. meaning that there aren't other big chunks of fees being taken out along the way because they're in the app store. Just follow the link to the store. It's as easy as buy this book. You, uh, in the process of purchasing, you'll register your account, which is your email address and your name. And that way, when you log into the app and you use that same email address, your audiobook will be there in your library, ready for you to listen to. So for authors who, uh, who wish to register their, uh, their audiobooks to Amplify Audiobooks, what does that onboarding process look like? Like, how, how, do they be, how do they do that? They've heard it on this podcast. They're thinking, right, I want a piece of that. Yeah. What's the next steps for them? Yeah, they can just, uh, they, so they can go to the, um, uh, you know, Amplify audiobooks.com click on the amplify my your impact you know 
Uh, mm-hmm. There's there's a button there just to to buy the program and what that will. There's a, a setup fee and um, and then a monthly maintenance fee. So when you when you buy that, it will then just very uh, very easily it will lead you right through the process each step along the way. Uh, we do need to gather just as every other audiobook platform does. We need to gather both the metadata, that's your book description, your mm-hmm. ISBNs, things like that. And mm-hmm. then also uh, like your cover image and the audio files. And we just walk you through that, you know, step by step. It's it's pretty straightforward. For anyone who has already published a book, it's not so different from other processes that you've been through. Mm-hmm. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Well, the link uh, to uh, the link mentioned there uh, will, of course, be in the description as well, just to make it that even more easier. So there's no excuses. Um, so, <laughs> I will so, say one other thing that's uh, uh, that's different about working, uh, going through the Amplify process than mm-hmm. your other typical publishing processes is that we have a team ready and able and eager to help in the process. And that is lacking in so many other places. So <laughs> oh, it, absolutely, it's so with, with these big companies, it's so difficult to be to be tre- like a human being. It's you just it's uh, yeah. anyway. That's a conversation for another day. Yeah. <laughs> but so um, marketing to some can often seem you know boring or even oversimplified to just you know posting a few pictures on Instagram every now and again. Like, why is it important for authors or, or anyone? doing marketing you know to consider working with the team to consider engaging with the community while marketing do you have any have any thoughts on that yeah there uh, i think there's a few different aspects to it one is is just the it it's so much more fun mm. you know when you're actually working with other people um it, and also then you get not only your own level of expertise but you get ideas and you know creative uh input from others who are in the process or who who are experts in the process it can be really fun and i i've actually been learning that you know because i have uh marketing has has often in my life felt like work you know Mm. (laughs) and it is it's becoming more and more fun because i have a team you know, mm. and that, uh, you know, I would just say from my own experience, it's uh, it's like it's, it's kind of like night and day in terms of how going from drudgery, you know, <laughs> to uh, to enjoyable, you know, something mm. that I really enjoy. Um, mm. So those are a few things that that come to mind. Yeah, it, it, it you can also you can just do so much more and you can have other people that are helping you out literally Mm -hmm. like the whole cross promotion thing you know like Mm -hmm. knowing that someone is even just gonna comment on your post Mm -hmm. if you are you know uh, communicating with them and saying oh yeah you know there's just so much more that can happen and and then you start to get this this synergy and the the energy just Mm -hmm. kind of grows from there and and so do audiences which is nice yeah Absolutely. You mentioned um, at, at the start of this interview, uh, and then also I've heard you talk about it on social media, also it's connecting or even reconnecting with your why. Um, and I think this always helps me um, with my marketing as well when, when you know, because sometimes it can be a little bit of a drag or sometimes you can kind of go off it. And reconnecting with that why is so important. And I just wondered if we could talk to like, if I could ask you how you reconnect with your why, and then also, what is your why? Oh, yeah. Um, How do I reconnect with my why? Well, uh, mostly meditation is really Mm -hmm. helpful for me. I try to meditate at least for a brief time Mm -hmm. every morning. I'm pretty good about mornings. I used to be really good at morning and night. I'm less good at night now, but <laughs> but at least once a day, you know, just taking, even if it's like just five minutes to just be still, because that that is, I think, the main thing that helps me reconnect. Um, mm-hmm. And what is my why? I just feel so passionate about story and how we 
ex how we live our lives. I, you know, it's like, I say this so many times, but like we are a story. I, I experience my life as a narrative. You know, you ask me anything, I immediately start creating a narrative in my head about the answer. Yeah. And I think that's a pretty common human experience. Uh, there may be some people who don't do words so much, but I think we really do experience our lives as story. And so when we impact the story, when we tell different stories, when we hear the story of someone who is very different from our story, he has a di very different story, mm -hmm. whether it's cultural, uh, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what that difference is, everyone's going to be different, right? We're all mm -hmm. unique. When we hear those stories, we're changed. Think about, just think about the books that you've listened to or, or read and how, you know, it might be one little phrase that kind of sticks with you, you know, mm -hmm. or just some idea that has, you know, sort of started to percolate in your mind from something that you've listened to, or, or maybe it's just like being brought through some emotional moment. It just makes you feel like, oh, wow, I'm so alive. Yeah. You know, I'm just so yeah. glad to be alive. Yeah. All of these things change who we are. And we, so I think we have so much power in story itself. And so, my whys is is really being able to um, facilitate that storytelling. It's like that's what theater is for me, and I'm I'm very very much a theater person. When I think about audiobook recording, it's all about the story. You know, this. Yeah, that's yeah, that's my why. <laughs> yeah, I resonate with that so much. I really do relate to it, and I think it's just you. You, I, I often find things whether I'm listening to a, an audiobook or, or reading a book and, and you just find things little nuggets sometimes which just change the way that you think even if it's just for that day um, I know just the other day I read a quote I forget who it was from but it was the quote was you are under no obligation to be the person that you were five minutes ago and I just felt that. that that was such a good, like, especially if you've, you know, if you had a bad day or something, or maybe you've reacted to a situation that you wish you'd done differently. And I think that, yeah, just, you can just read something, you can just listen to something and it just changes your perspective in just the most wonderful ways. Um, yes. I think it's fantastic. Yes. May I ask you um, the most hated question on this show? I've had more complaints oh. about this question than anything. <laughs> oh, go for it. I'm excited now. <laughs> <laughs> what is a question that you wished you were asked more? Maybe something like I, I haven't I haven't thought about this question, so I might have yeah. a different answer in five minutes. But um, what what's important to you? Yeah, I I really love mm -hmm. having like deep conversations mm -hmm. with people that I care about, especially you know that it's so it's just a way. I don't know, there's something so wonderful and rich about those moments. And I've been in conversation mm -hmm. like with my my kids, for example, and they, mm -hmm. you know, we somehow we get into the deep philosophical questions of life. And we may not always agree on, often don't agree on everything. And I, I love mm -hmm. that, you know, it's like, yeah. gives me an opportunity to grow. It's, it's one of those things, I don't think, um, well, you meet those people in life who have that ability to be yeah. able to access deep conversations with someone they've only just met. And that is, mm -hmm. a, that is a trait that I'm so envious of yeah. um, because I get really shy and, and just, yeah, I'm good, thanks. <laughs> and then, yeah. You know, and I, I think it's, there is something, you know, almost sad with the fact that we don't, or most often don't tend to, look really ask you know how are you or as you say like what's important to you i was asked i was at a gathering it was actually the last time i was in new york and it was the only place i'd ever been asked this question but it was it was what are you passionate about right now and i thought that was such a good party question like that was such a good like to the heart it of is it. You'd never, yeah you'd never get an, any english person asking that <laughs> 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 that's great yeah it's a similar kind of question like yeah, what are you passionate about? 
Mm. Okay, so another difficult question for you, because you wear so many hats within this space, you know, running Pro Audio Voices, Amplify Audiobooks, directing audiobooks, narrating audiobooks, writing, producing and narrating your own story, you know, hosting the Audiobook Connection podcast, uh, and, and, uh, you know, that's just scratching the surface. There's, there's, you know, a business managerial roles, there's creative roles. Is there a role out of all of that, or maybe something that I haven't mentioned, that brings you the most joy? Or is that like asking your favorite child? Uh, it's almost like asking my favorite child. But <laughs> I guess, hmm, yeah, that's almost like asking that. <laughs> the first thing that comes, I guess I might answer, like I came into this as a, as a narrator, and I love narrating audiobooks. They've allowed me to grow in different ways, different parts of me, you know, different skill sets, but they each offers different avenues of, or different growth for different parts of who I am. But I, I do love performing. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I love great. directing. Too. I, I love all of it. So <laughs> I'm gonna, now I'm going to say, I was like, oh, I love yeah. directing too. That's, that's also really fun. Yeah. yeah. I think it's something that I found um, myself, uh, you know, doing various things. As long as it's always in story, I'm happy. Even yeah. like the most boring admin tasks, if it's to facilitate, a, you know, bringing a story to somebody in yeah. some capacity. Um, I think, I, yeah, I think uh, I can't really complain too much. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. So 10 years, Pro Audio Voices, 10 years. We have Amplify Audiobooks coming at people in full steam ahead. Is there anything in the future that you're looking forward to? Maybe, you know, a little snippet, a little bit of an insight that we can get that, that is driving you um, uh, that, that, that's coming uh, in the future. I, I will say that the main thing right now for me is Amplify v version three, yeah, like the next mm. level. Um, There's so many things we want to do with it that, um, you know, just to make it an even better experience, even smoother, even, you know, mm. uh, more features. And that is really exciting to me. Um, but, you know, we have, there's some things that we have to achieve at this level before we're able to step into that next level. But mm. I would say I, that's, that's probably the biggest thing for me. Yeah, that's really fair. Well, that brings us uh, to a close for this episode of the Audiobook Club. Of course, all of the links to Amplify Audiobooks, Pro Audio Voices, and of course, Becky's book, The Left Turn, Two Lives, Worlds Apart, will be linked in the show notes and all of the ways that you can get involved with joining Amplify Audiobooks or, of course, promoting the message. Uh, so thank you so much for tuning in. And of course, a huge thank you to you, Becky, for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Frustrated by the royalty rates for your audiobook? Annoyed that when the digital distributors say 70% royalties, they actually mean 70% of 50% or 80% of 70%, neither of which is an actual 70%. Wishing there was a way to cut out the middleman? Yet, you want your audiobook listeners to have a smooth and positive experience and a direct download sale from your website won't deliver that. We at Pro Audio Voices hear you. Out of our commitment to our author clients, we've created Amplify, a program that provides an actual 65% of the sales price that you set, that gives you access to your customers' names and emails so you can reconnect with them, and keeps you in the driver's seat. Check it out at ProAudioVoices.com. You'll find Amplify in the marketing menu.